Hello and welcome to Finextra TV. I'm Alex Lippich. You join us UK Fintech Week here at the IFGS 2024, celebrating its 10th anniversary. And I'm delighted to be here with Sir Chris Hongs of Richmond MBE. Chris, thank you ever so much for giving up your time to speak to us today. Pleasure. So, Chris, um, yesterday we heard from Bim Afalami, uh, the MP there, who revealed the Open Finance Task Force. Um, what are the implications of this, in your opinion? Firstly, how fantastic to be at the 10th anniversary of IFGS. Yes. Opened by the Prime Minister, a fabulous presentation from BIM as Economic Secretary to the Treasury, mm -hmm. and full of great announcements, not least the Open Finance Task Force. What does this mean in simple terms? possibilities, possibilities for citizens, for consumers, for small businesses particularly, to get the finance which can then flow into opportunities. For far too long in this country, particularly if you've been a small business or indeed an individual, you haven't been able to ply your trade, mm. your talent to the full extent. Open finance has the potential to transform all of that, opening up economic opportunities through that, social opportunities for businesses, companies, citizens, cities, for this whole country. It's such a positive week, so great to be here. 10 years of IFGS, great energy. Chris, what does your AI regulation bill mean for financial services and for FinTech? What I wanted to assure by introducing my artificial intelligence regulation bill mm. was that the UK puts itself in a position to lead through legislation to enable the opportunities from artificial intelligence. Finance, financial services, fintech can be at the absolute leading edge of that. We have such an extraordinary financial services sector, not just in London, but across the country. Yeah, yeah. Thus, we have such a phenomenal fintech industry right across the United Kingdom. So through putting in place right size regulation, mm -hmm. understanding how we can legislate for pro-innovation, pro-citizen rights, pro-consumer protection, that enables certainty, stability, consistency, which means that in terms of innovation, in terms of inward investment, those can all be optimised because whoever you are, there'll be an understanding that the UK understands the opportunities and indeed the challenges of artificial intelligence for financial services, for fintech, and has legislated to enable, to empower, and to understand how to manage and mitigate the risks associated. You mentioned a lot of achievements and components that we should be proud of, 100% behind that one. Um, Chris, how can we better align technology for financial inclusion and for those vulnerable customers out there? For me, the most interesting part of technology is how we can deploy it for public good. Mm -hmm. It's everything that I've tried to achieve in my first 10 years in Parliament. Technology for public good and if we conceive of the technologies as tools, incredibly powerful tools, but tools in our human hands, so be it artificial intelligence, be it blockchain, be it everything around IoT, tools in our human hands, we determine, we decide, we develop, we deploy, and the way to enable, be it for financial inclusion, the greater protection of vulnerable consumers in financial services, a complete transformation of how we assess risk to greater financially enable millions of people across the country. We will get it right mm. if we take a principles-based, outcomes-focused, inputs-understood approach. And those principles need to run through all of this if we're to optimise the opportunity. Transparency and trust, inclusion for innovation, interoperability and an international perspective, accessibility, accountability and assurance. If we hold true to all those principles, we can not just transform FinTech for the next decade, we can transform financial inclusion, digital inclusion, and fundamentally transform the very relationship 
between citizen and state for the benefit of both. Sure, really um, insightful debate. So thank you so much. That will be very interesting to see how things develop moving forwards. Now, I won't take up any more of your time, Chris. I just want to say thank you so much for joining us. I know you've got a busy rest of your day, so enjoy it and thank you once again. Complete pleasure. Always great to talk to you. And if anybody wants to be in touch, please do hit me up on LinkedIn. Plenty more of this stuff there. At Lord Chris Holmes. Look forward to hearing from you all. Thank you very much. Will do. Thank you, Chris.